Welcome to Education Forum. I'm Herman Badillo, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the City University. The improvement of education affects all New Yorkers. This program will focus on the key educational issues and challenges before us all. My guest today is Stephen Sanders, who is the Chairman of the Education Committee in the Assembly. He has been an Assemblyman since 1978, and he's a graduate of City College, majoring in government. Uh, he uh, comes to us uh, with long experience uh, in the legislature, but we're particularly interested in his viewpoint because, uh, Steve, we now have an education president. President Bush made the uh, education legislation his first uh, legislation, and he keeps talking about it every week. And you're the chairman of the Committee on Education in the State Assembly. What do you think of President Bush's uh, proposals? Well, I'm, I'm gratified that, uh, that the president has put education at the top of his agenda, maybe slightly be below tax cuts. I hear a little more about tax cuts than I do about education, but he has stressed the fact that, uh, that we have to make sure that we have 21st century education in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And sadly, uh, there are school districts not only in New York City and New York State uh, that, uh, that are not up to uh, where we ought to be as a country and as a state, uh, there are a lot of districts around the country as well. And all the polls, of course, show that uh, the public finally has decided that public education uh, is yes. the number one issue, and, and rightfully so, because I think that everyone from the president on down has made the connection that the workforce of tomorrow is contingent on what kind of students we graduate from the high schools and then ultimately go on to the institutions of higher learning. And uh, so the focus is, is welcome. Well, he was, uh, he was very much uh, in support of education when he was governor of Texas. Uh, you remember that uh, they eliminated social promotion and uh, he gave a priority to educational programs. But tell me this, how, what do you feel um, about his program that has, says that if a failing school does not improve over a period of three years, then federal funding, which is small, it's only 7% of the total, but still important, that that would be uh, given to the parents instead. Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not in favor now. Uh, I don't expect I will be in favor tomorrow of the idea of vouchers. Uh, I, am, uh, I am unconvinced that taking money away from a school, taking money away from a public education system is the way to improve public education. But he, gives, but he gives every school at least three years, well, perhaps more, to improve. The problem is that uh, here in New York City, as you know, and throughout the country, we have so many schools that are failing. I don't mean just the students failing, but the whole school is failing. And, I, I and think, nothing happens. I think what we do in New York State, and we can refine it, and we probably should refine it, is the better way to go. Um, the Commissioner of Education, uh, Commissioner Mills, um, publishes a list every year of underperforming mm -hmm. schools, schools right. called SIR schools, schools right. under registration review. The way it is supposed to work, and it hasn't worked this way up until now, is that after three years, if that school has not met its benchmark uh, milestones that uh, the Commissioner sets for it in terms of, of testing, in term, sometimes in terms of, of attendance, um, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't meet those uh, benchmarks, then the school is supposed to be closed, remodeled, reopened with a different principal, a, uh, a different staff, a different uh, a set of pedagogy uh, a, a principles sometimes. Unfortunately, what we found was that there were schools on the SIR list for six, eight, nine, Nothing 10, happens. 12 years. The commissioner is changing that. I've uh, urged him to change that, well, that, that af after three years, if a school is still on the SIR list, that school ought to be closed. It should be closed. That was the intention. And get a new group of administrators, sometimes new teachers, into the school who can do the job. Well, I hope you'll press them because, uh, unfortunately, we have uh, all kinds of meaningless three-year standards in the, uh, in the uh, Board of Regents. For example, aside from the point that you talk, we also have on bilingual education after three years you're supposed to get a waiver, but everybody gets a waiver, and we end up with kids in bilingual education for seven or eight years. And uh, the same thing now, where they say three years from now, in 2004, 
in the regions test, the, um, the passing mark will be raised from 55 to 65. When I see that, I'll believe it, you know, because <laughs> they have never well, kept those you schedules. Know, Herman, I, I would say this. There's no question about the fact that, uh, that there are a number of building blocks to quality education. One of the building blocks is adequate investment. Uh, we can debate, uh, although a judge recently indicated that uh, adequate investment has not been made either at the state or the city level yeah, in public education. Yeah, I want to ask you about uh, that decision because the judge <coughs> went, went further than that. He said that uh, uh, there was a constitutional requirement that additional monies be given to the New York City schools. And the governor has appealed that decision. Uh, what do you think the legislature should do about that decision? Well, first of all, I think the governor was wrong to appeal the decision. This, this was a court case that lasted for nearly eight years. It was a court case that went through the Court of Appeals because in the middle of the process, the Court of Appeals gave the trial court instructions as to the parameters that the, the trial court should be looking at. So finally, uh, in January of this year, just a month ago, uh, Judge DeGrasse issued a 200-page decision, which was a, really an indictment of the funding formulas and the amounts of money that go to different school districts, particularly New York City. There's no question about the fact that for generations, New York City has not gotten its appropriate share of state funding. I think the governor was wrong to appeal the decision. And when the Assembly, uh, the Assembly Democrats next month, put out our budget response to the governor's uh, budget proposals in education, you can be sure that we are going to be making a number of structural recommendations well, to well, change the because formula. Because the judge uh, said that the uh, legislature would have until September 15th in order to come up with a formula to satisfy the decision so that even if the governor uh, appeals the decision, there's nothing to prevent the legislature from uh, trying to meet that September 15th requirement. And that would require a really uh, radical revision of the school aid formula for New York City. Do you think that you have the votes in the Assembly and the State Senate? Well, I, th I think that uh, you will find that there <coughs> is um, the energy and the enthusiasm in the Assembly to take on this very difficult and probably complicated task. And I think that we could accomplish it by the beginning of, of the next school year. I am dubious that the, st the state senate uh, that uh, applauded the governor for appealing the decision will engage us in a genuine dialogue and effort to change the formula in a way that New York City gets the money and other school districts around the state get the money that will provide for a sound basic education for their students. But do you think it's possible to provide the amount of money that the judge uh, required be provided under the Constitution? Uh, which was over a billion dollars without increasing taxes? Yes, I do. I do because we are fortunate at this point in time that the state has a very healthy economy. Uh, going into the next fiscal year, on April 1, we probably have about a three to four billion dollar surplus. We are expecting that we will probably have surpluses for at least another year or two. Listen, there is nothing more important than investing in public education. So at a point in time where we are lucky that we have these kinds of uh, revenues to be able to spend, and I'm not saying spend them all, and I'm not even saying spend them all on education, but what better investment for government to make than education? Well, I agree with you, but I think there's nothing sadder than the analysis that the judge made about what is happening in education in New York City. I read the opinion, and you remember there was a section where he talked about what's going on with the students. He pointed out that 30% of the students never graduate from high school, and that is, to me, the, the most depressing aspect of it, because if you never graduate from high school, you really have no opportunity. Then he pointed out that 10% get a GED, which he said is worthless because it's just the basic, most minimal skills. That's 40%. But then he said that 48% only get a degree that brings them up to the sixth to ninth grade level, and that is for a 12th grade diploma, that's 88%. And that means that only 12% mm -hmm. of the children get a real high school diploma in New York City today. 
Now, nobody has challenged that statement, but to me, that is the most serious indictment of the entire educational system that I've ever seen. And there, there isn't a silver bullet here. There isn't one single thing that we can do that will turn all of this around. But there are a number of things that we can and some things that we have done already that I think after a period of, 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 a, of a few short years will take root. Money is important. Investment in schools is important. We need to have schools that are not overcrowded. Well, you, you we need to have school buildings that are equipped with 21st century technology, and we need to have teachers. As, as the judge pointed out, one of the glaring weaknesses in the New York City public school system is that we, after two or three years of a teacher teaching in New York City, we lose them uh, to some of the uh, wealthiest suburban school districts on Long Island or uh, Westchester that are able to pay uh, salaries which are competitive with, with today's uh, world. We also need to have better trained teachers. I know one of the bills that you've sponsored Professional development. is for uh, teacher training, and that's why at CUNY now, uh, under my administration, I brought in a dean for teacher education because I was concerned that a number of the colleges, including the one that you and I graduated from, City College, they were graduating students who could not pass the teacher's exam, and that has to stop and I expect that it will stop. Well, you know, one, one of the things that, that you tackled uh, early on in your uh, chairmanship of, uh, of this university system uh, was the question of remediation uh, in the senior colleges. Now, however one feels about uh, to what degree should there be remediation offered at the senior colleges, it is undoubtedly true that too many, so many uh, youngsters graduating from the public school system needed to have remedial help uh, in the first or second years of their college education. That says to me that something has failed, not at uh, CUNY, but something oh, yeah. failed uh, in the high schools. And uh, you know, there, there, there are a host of things that, that we can talk about to improve the high schools to make sure that they have the kind of uh, the, uh, uh, libraries they need, the technology they need, the science labs that they need. This will cost money, but there's also accountability. And I, and I, know, and I know that uh, uh, your views on accountability oh, yes, yes. Uh, are very well known. And I think that one of the things that we've done, Herman, that, that, that I think introduces accountability into the system, and we'll see how it works over a number of years, is uh, the development of charter schools. Okay, York, let's take that State. up after these announcements. This is Catherine Hepburn. Something is terribly wrong in our cities and in our streets. Thousands of our citizens are living in cardboard boxes and begging for meals in America. There must be a better way. Join the Partnership for the Homeless and help people find homes, jobs, productive lives. If we work together, we can right this terrible wrong. To contact your local partnership, call 1-800-438-0005. Imagine being without a home. Imagine being sick, not having a job, not having anyone to turn to. Thousands of people are being helped by the Partnership for the Homeless. They provide safe, decent shelter, permanent affordable housing, counseling, and job training. But nothing comes free. If you want to help the homeless, support the Partnership for the Homeless. It's the most effective and economical program of its kind in the country. We're back today with Assemblyman Stephen Sanders from the uh, east side of Manhattan, who is the chairman of the Committee on Education in the State Assembly. Um, Assemblyman Sanders, we were talking about charter schools. I support charter schools, and uh, I would like to see even more than the 100 schools that were approved by the state legislature. Uh, what do you think has been the progress that has been made so far? Well, we started uh, this, this experiment in New York State just two years ago. We passed the charter school legislation in December of 1998, um, and I think that we will be able to assess how well they have done after uh, two or three years. But we, we already have, I guess, statewide about uh, 30 or 40 charter mm -hmm. schools that have been approved that are coming online. Uh, we also uh, provided for an unlimited number of charter school, of public school conversions yes. to charter schools. And one of the things that we will see how it may play out in terms of accountability, in terms of competition, uh, is the situation of a failing public school 
that then can become converted into a charter school as we are seeing at least in We're the proposals. Which coming up right now with the Edison uh, schools, exactly the five right. schools which will be voted upon uh, very shortly. What's your view about that? Well, my, my, my view is that um, it is healthy to have the possibility for either the chancellor, in this case uh, Chancellor Levy, or the community to be able to propose alternatives to neighborhood public schools that for a period of time have failed. And without commenting on whether I think Edison is, is the best company uh, to do this or not, I think, I think that the notion that, that there can be alternatives, that the parents need not be trapped forever, the students need not be relegated forever into failing schools is a healthy thing. Up until now, you had a school that was failing. Maybe it didn't make the SIR list. It would just go on for year after year after year, uh, not serving the needs of the students or the community. With, with the possibility uh, of converting public schools to charter schools, that creates, um, I think, a, a different environment. Uh, first of all, to make sure that the public school succeeds. And second of all, if it doesn't succeed, the possibility to do something else, something different, something right. better. It's an alternative, really, uh, similar to uh, what President Bush proposes, that something be done after a period of time. But you have, um, I think we all agree that the principal is a key person in any school, and you have supported uh, legislation which in some ways brings about, uh, if not the elimination of principal tenure, but in, enables a review of principles to take place which couldn't take place before. Tell us about that. Well, I, I was involved in the negotiations between uh, the principals union that at that time was headed by uh, Don Singer, now Jill Levy, uh, the mayor's office, and, uh, and Chancellor Crew. Uh, chancellor Crew was still uh, uh, the chancellor. And I was involved in those negotiations. And uh, uh, there, there were a couple of things that were at stake and were accomplished. Number one is that uh, we recognized that uh, the principals really needed to be compensated on a level um, commensurate with uh, what principals can make uh, in Westchester or Long Island. They need to be compensated on a level of a, uh, of a CEO running a small business. There is nobody more important in the school than the principal. So we recognized that fact by, by raising the salaries, but in exchange for raising the salaries, there is a much more direct and much more expeditious system of accountability where principals now can get uh, evaluated and, and are evaluated on a yearly basis. And, and if there is academic failure, if there is persistent academic failure in that school, the principal now can be uh, removed, transferred, in some cases removed from the system altogether. Uh, but that is very important because there, there needs to be a connection uh, between uh, the longevity of that supervisor and the results in that okay. school. Now, that was a landmark agreement because the contract, the principal's contract, had been pending for years and nobody could get uh, a resolution of it uh, because the principals wanted a substantial increase and the mayor wanted an end to uh, principal tenure. So the agreement that was made resolved both issues. Now, we're in the same situation with respect to the teachers. The teachers feel they're entitled to a, a sub very substantial increase to bring them up to the level of Westchester and Nassau and Suffolk County. The mayor feels that we have to bring about an end to teacher tenure. Do you think that it might be possible, uh, because the agreement is being negotiated and apparently go nowhere that it might be possible uh, with your help to come to some sort of agreement that is similar to the agreement on principles. Well, first of all, no one has asked for my help here. <laughs> did so, they ask for your help on the other one? Yes, they did. Um, and, I, and I was happy uh, to provide uh, some kind of assistance, which I think in the final analysis turned out to be uh, effective in that we had an agreement. Um, I, I think, that, uh, I think that the union recognizes, I think uh, that the city recognizes that there are compromises to be made here. I think that everyone recognizes the fact that uh, there, there does need to be uh, some substantial increase in pay. We need to attract and retain the best teachers we can because ultimately uh, that school building, uh, even if it has modern technology, if it doesn't have a qualified and skilled teacher, 
in the classroom, that's just a building. That's not a school anymore. That's just a building. So we need to attract and retain the best teachers we can. And part of that, of course, uh, is salary. Um, we also know without, without going so far as to say that uh, tenure ought to be eliminated, because I don't think it should be, and I don't think it will be. But there are all kinds of work rules that uh, uh, Chancellor Levy is talking about, things that will make the school run more efficiently, things that will allow the principal uh, to have the kind of authority in that school building that the principal needs to have. I think there are compromises to be made here, and I think that uh, uh, Randy Weingarten, who is a very skilled union leader, uh, understands that uh, there's, there's give and take. Because one of the arguments that uh, people make and parents make in areas like the South Bronx and Harlem is that teachers stay there for a period of time and then as soon as they have a chance they are allowed by the contract to move out and move from say the South Bronx to the North Bronx. In fact an analysis that we made at one point when I was uh, president of the Bronx indicated that uh, teachers uh, salaries in Riverdale were far higher than the teachers salaries in the South Bronx and the reason for that was that the more experienced teachers moved to the better neighborhoods whereas it should be the other way around the more experienced teachers should be in the poorer neighborhoods. That, that historically has been uh, known as bumping mm -hmm. where the senior teacher is, is able to take advantage of, of other openings in other parts of the city and uh, no big surprise uh, teachers like any other professional want to work in, in uh, areas, school buildings that they feel are most conducive uh, to teaching. They don't want to work in older buildings. They don't want to work in buildings that don't have modern technology. Um, but we need one way or the other. We need to ensure that we have the best teachers in the worst schools. And when I say the worst schools, I'm not talking about the community. I'm talking about schools mm -hmm. that are overcrowded. I'm talking about schools that don't have modern technology. We need, we need to attract the best uh, pedagogues, the best professionals into those schools that have the greatest challenges. And whether it's through uh, incentives uh, to work in, uh, in some of those uh, school buildings, through whatever device, we've got to break this cycle of, of a poor school, a poor education, uh, and it just gets cycled and recycled generation after generation. One of the things that bothers me about the philosophy of uh chancellors over the years is that I think they wait too long to begin to try to come to grips with the problems of students. Most of the tests begin in the third grade, but you have sponsored uh, legislation to uh, begin working with the children in pre-kindergarten. I think that that is far more important than anything else because if we wait to the third grade, I think it's too late. How is that legislation coming along? Well, we, uh, we have started uh, three years ago uh, what we refer to as universal pre-K, offering uh, state dollars to every school system in the state uh, if they wish to develop a pre-K program. New York City is taking advantage of it, and we are phasing in, uh, I think, another 60 or 70 million dollars in the next school year. And we believe uh, that by uh, the beginning of the September 2001 school year, virtually every local school district will have the resources to develop a pre-K program for four-year-olds. Sadly, uh, however, there are some school buildings that are simply overcrowded, cannot, uh, cannot uh, uh, have another grade because they don't have enough room. Well, and there aren't even uh, community-based organizations in some neighborhoods, like a Head Start program where the pre-K program can be located. That's the reason why it is so important that we concentrate on school facilities well, why, and why we have the room. Yeah, but why can't the Board of Education plan much better than they do? I mean, we all know that the migration into New York City from Latin America and from Asia is continuing. And all you have to do is talk to Dominicans or talk to uh, Mexicans and talk to other groups, and they will tell you. So if, if we know, how is it possible that the Board of Education always underestimates the number of students that are coming in and doesn't plan for building schools for the next 10, 15 years? Well, I think they're doing a better job of it now. Uh, clearly, uh, when you look at the history in the 1980s and the early, the first half of the 1990s, you're absolutely correct. Uh, there, there seemingly was shock and surprise 
when 10, 15, 20,000 additional students were coming into the system every year. In, fra in fact, in the early 80s, we were uh, getting rid of school buildings as if we didn't mm -hmm. need them anymore. Then we found out that, uh, that we increased the, the student population by about 150,000 students in about 10 years, didn't have the room. Uh, I, I credit uh, uh, Chancellor Levy uh, uh, with, with doing some solid planning, I believe. Uh, uh, Milo Reverso, who's the president of the School Construction Authority, I think has also turned that agency around. Obviously, you can't uh, build a new school building overnight. You've got to identify land. You've got to identify property. Uh, well, it takes a while. Ahead. But I am, uh, I am much more satisfied that that planning and that real hard-headed approach to the needs, the infrastructure needs of the school system is actually happening now. Well, I hope so, because uh, another thing is when they come here, the immigrants uh, have, get married and have children, so we have to plan for that as well. But unfortunately, we're out of time, so good luck in the legislative session. Thank you very much. And we hope to have you back soon. You can reach us by email at our website, www.cuny.tv, or write to us at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016.